Hi, my name is Sarah Schwartz, and I'd like to take a couple minutes today to talk to you about the sport of three-day eventing and the largest competition they have for the eventers all year, which is Rolex. Rolex actually just occurred a couple of weeks ago, so we have really current information on it. Um, according to the Kentucky Horse Park website, eventing is defined as the ultimate test of horse and rider, and we know this to be true because it is one event, but there are three disciplines in this event. Um, they do all three of the English disciplines, which is dressage, cross country, and show jumping. Um, dressage is essentially a dance with the horse. It's a formatted test where you go through movements and it tests the gates of the horse, so how the horse moves, um, their suppleness, how easily they move, how fluid their motion is, and their obedience, how quickly they respond to their rider. Um, cross country tests their endurance, their bravery, and their conditioning, so how well they were prepared for this. Are they in their peak performance, or could they be performing even better? The goal is to have your horse the best condition before this type of an event anyway. And then show jumping. Show jumping just tests the precision, how well the horse is trained, Do they, does the horse go forward, does it come back to the rider, does it take off and land the way it should. And their athletic ability, how tightly they can turn. The, jumper, the jumping courses tend to be a little bit tighter turns, they're not going as fast as they are on cross country. Um, the Rolex Kentucky History webpage just highlighted how the competition has evolved over the years and how it's grown in popularity and, and how it's added events for like young riders and like an intermediate level so that you're not always having to compete at the highest level, which is the four star level. You can do lower level things at this event. Um, but Rolex itself is a nonprofit Kentucky corporation. Um, it was the stage of the 1978 World Three Day Event, which was a big deal. This was the first time it was held in the U.S. Um, there was a horse trial held there before. It was in, held two years prior. Um, so the park was in use, but not. It was designed for the World Three Day Event. Um, as I said, they did add the intermediate level and the young riders, which just opened more divisions, allowed more people to come and participate, um, attracted more of an audience. This was a great way to grow this type of an event. Um, as of 1998, and it still is, the only four-star event held outside of Europe, which is impressive that it's in the United States. Um, because there are only six in the world, and we have one in the United States, and it is the only one in this hemisphere. So it's kind of a big deal when it comes around every year. Um, the Kentucky, um, the Rolex Kentucky eventing page um, illustrated just how popular this event is around the world. It, uh, it is one of the most prestigious three-day competitions. It's one of four, only six in the world. Um, it attracts fans from and athletes from all over the world. Um, it is known by fans and the fans from all over the world as the best weekend all year. This event draws in vendors from all over the place. Um, so it's a, it, it's a, it's a big show. It, it's just, um, it's like a fair and it's not a fair, but, um, it draws in vendors and food and competition and um, it's just like a cultural melting pot. Everyone is there. Um, there was also an article written about this year's Rolex um, about the horses and how the horses performed. Um, there are two different kinds of horses that will compete in eventing, and most of them are either warm bloods or thoroughbreds. Um, warm bloods being your um, more like Olympic style horses. That's what you see doing more of the jumping, the jumpers, and the dressage. Thoroughbreds are a little bit more popular in eventing. Um, off the track thoroughbreds have become incredibly popular in this, um, for this year. Um, there were 15 that started the event this year, and all but three, um, all but one finished all three of the phases, which is incredibly impressive. That's a 93% completion rate for the off the track thoroughbreds. Um, five of those horses even finished in the top 20. Um, the Warm Bloods, they did well. There were 40 of the 56 finished the event, so they finished all three phases. Um, but they only had a 71% completion rate. Um, 
they were just more tired by the end of it. This was just a harder um, year for them. They just didn't quite do as well. They got tired. They were starting to do things that were not characteristic for the horses. They were stopping at fences. They were pulling down rails. They were just tired. Um, uh, some people have a tendency to think that the off-the-track there was, they won't hold up to this kind of competition just because it's so difficult and the off-the-track therapists have raced. They have prior injuries. They have prior issues going into these types of events. Um, not all of them have had injuries, but they have a background that makes them more susceptible to those kind of things. Or some people would say that. Um, but there were a good number of off-the-track thoroughbreds, and many of them were older, too. Um, there was, of the 54 horses that completed the event, um, six of them were 17 years or older. Um, and all but two of those horses were off the track thoroughbreds. So that just shows that these horses are incredibly easy to retrain and can really go a long way even after their racing career has ended. Um, Jenny Autry published um, an article in Eventing Nation about who's looking really good for the upcoming Olympics, which is coming this summer. So some of the athletes that had been mentioned were like Bruce Davidson, who's also known as Buck Davidson. He's more commonly known by that name. David O'Connor, Karen O'Connor, Philip Dutton, and Boyd Martin were all on that list. These are, for the most part, everybody has competed at this four-star level for a long time. Many of them have been to the Olympics before, and they have medals to their name. So these are really people to watch, especially going into the Olympics this year. Um, this is a really entertaining sport. It's very high action. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, I really encourage anybody who is even remotely interested in horses to watch this kind of event and watch these people because they're incredible. Thank you.